Hi friends! I recently published a video about the assembly of an electric arc lighter. Today we will go a little further and we'll make a compact pocket electric shocker. Everyone knows what an electric shocker is. If not, then go to the playlist of the channel with the same name and you will find a lot of videos about assembly and tests of a variety of electroshock devices, including very powerful ones. This sample has a power of no more than 3 watts, which is permitted by law, and is not capable of causing serious harm to health, but a fairly strong electric shock plus a small burn is guaranteed. So, about the circuit. It consists of three parts – power supply, boost converter and high voltage multiplier. Let's start with the battery. At first, I planned to use a regular lithium-ion battery of compact size, but later, a tent was a battery much better than the usual one. This is a lithium ferrophosphate or lithium-ion phosphate battery. Unlike common lithium-ion batteries, it has a lower capacity with the same weight and a nominal voltage of 3.2 volts against 3.7 volts. You will ask why? What are pluses of it? There are many. With its own capacity of only 700 milliamperes per hour, it can give current to 30 to 50 amperes, has a service life of 10 to 15 years, is capable of operating at minus 30 degrees Celsius without loss of capacity and other negative consequences. And also, they are environmentally friendly, safe, do not swell and do not explode. In comparison with traditional lithium batteries, they lose capacity much more slowly. And most importantly, Phosphate batteries aren't much sensitive to the parameters of the charger. They can be charged with high currents and do not overheat. Ideally, such batteries require protection from undervoltage. Nevertheless, I decided not to protect against undervoltage as the shocker consumes more than 3 amperes, but I had protection boards only with a current of no more than 3 amperes. But, of course, to put protection is preferable. Now about the converter. Here I use the ready-made high-voltage DC-AC converter bought online. A link is in the description. But in the previous video I showed how to make the same converter from the trash. The most important in this converter is the transformer and how to make it I have already shown. So I just put here a fragment from that video. My transformer is taken from the non-working computer power supply unit. It is desirable that it be such, like mine, of an elongated type. It is easier to wind it. Next, the transformer needs to be dismantled. The ferret core consists of two halves that are glued together. Gently heat the core with the soldering iron for 5 to 10 minutes. The glue will loosen and the halves can be disconnected. In the description you can find a link to the video where I showed the simple methods of disassembling pulse transformers. Pay attention that the halves have a gap in the center. Taking into account the circuit of the inverter which I intend to use, such a non-magnetic gap is ideally needed, but the circuit will work without a gap too. After dismounting the core halves, it is necessary to remove all the factory windings, leaving only the bare skeleton. Now let's wind the primary winding. For this purpose, I took the wire of 0.5 mm and folded it twice. In principle, the diameter of the wire can be from 0.2 to 0.8 mm, optimally 0.4 to 0.7 mm. Make 8 turns and output the second end of the wire as shown in the video. Isolate winding with several layers of fluoroplastic tape or ordinary transparent tape. Both options are equally good. Next, take a thin wire. I took it from the coil of a 12 volt relay. Such a wire can be found even in the wall clock or just buy it. It is very thin. The caliper shows 0.05 mm. This wire we must solder to the stranded wire. In my case, it's a flexible high voltage wire in fairly thick insulation. The place of soldering is insulated by heat shrink tube and fixed with a hot melt glue to prevent accidentally tear it off during winding. Let's begin winding, but I can't make as good as these Chinese women. Just try to be accurate and careful. Winding is done in rows. Each row of 100 to 120 turns, then again several layers of insulation. 
The wire isn't cut; it goes with insulation. The principle of winding is simple. For example, the first row was wound from left to right, the second from right to left, and so on. The total number of turns in the winding must be about one thousand two hundred. So we must do from ten to twelve layers. At the end of winding, a multi-stranded high-voltage wire was soldered to it. Isolate with heat shrink tube. In general, do the same what we did at the beginning. Then fix all these with several layers of transparent tape and collect the transformer halves. They are additionally fixed with heat-resistant adhesive tape. Someone will ask, what if the wire will torn? If it happened, you must gently solder them, and for this layer, put the insulation twice as much as usual. But not everyone has enough patience to wind such a transformer. Therefore, I advise you to give preference to ready-made models. Many parts of this project are bought from online stores, and using the browser extension of AliTools, you can find the most profitable product at the best price. You can also study dynamics of price changes for this product and quickly assess the seller's rating. AliTools, your reliable assistant. The link is in the description under the video. The next part is a high voltage multiplier. To build it, you need a high voltage diodes and capacitors. In fact, they are very easy to find. Capacitors, for example, can be taken from a computer power supply. You need capacitors from 2 kilovolts and higher. Capacitive from 1,000 picofarads. Initially, I put the capacitors of 1,600 volts. During the test, they burned out, but 2 kilovolts worked without problem. As high voltage diodes, you can use any with a voltage about 4 kilovolt. I have a hand Russian Gotze 106 and Gotze 117 series. High voltage diodes can also be bought online. There are quite a lot of suitable types. In the description, there are some links. The box in my case was taken from the player. It must necessarily be made of dielectric material, plastic, backlight, fiberglass, and so on. A multiplier with a high voltage converter is advisable to use with epoxy resin. You can also use molten wax or hot melt glue. But if the box is plastic, we must dissipate heat, otherwise hot melt can damage the box. Pins or electrodes can be taken from an ordinary electric plug. The shocker is equipped with a safety switch in order to avoid accidental starting. To activate the device, first turn on safety switch. The indicator LED will light up, then press the button. The charger is simple. It is based on the LM2596 chip. You need to apply 5V to the input of the model, tune output at 3.6V, and current 500mA. We need charger, which would allow charging the device from any USB port without overloading the latter. So, the maximum charge current is 500mA, and 3.6V is the voltage of a fully charged lithium ferrophosphate battery. It seems that the device is ready. From the solder I made protective discharger, limiting the length of the arc for the safe operation of the high voltage converter. Friends, all the necessary information is in the description. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day. With you was Kassian TV.